MacBook Pro M1 or MacBook Air M1, which one should you guys get? We've been testing both for more than two weeks now, and here's everything you need to know in terms of the two, from the design all the way to the performance, special features, battery, and so, so much more. Starting off with the design, these two MacBooks look very similar, but there are indeed a few advantages that the Air does offer over the Pro. For example, the Air comes in gold, which the Pro does not. The Air is also lighter at 1.29 kilograms versus 1.4, however, when holding both of these in my hands, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. Now, the Air does have a tapered design where it is thinner towards the front and then thicker towards the back, whereas the MacBook Pro has a uniform, squared off design. At its thinnest points, the Air is just 0.41 centimeters thin, however, at its thickest points, the Air is 1.61, which is actually thicker than the constant thickness of 1.56 uh, that a MacBook Pro has. Other than that, there are no design differences between these two models, and they even have the exact same ports. Two USB 4 slash Thunderbolt ports on the left, and one headphone jack on the right. Now, when it comes to the actual display panels, these are again very similar. They're both 13 inches in size, uh, they both have the same 2560 by 1600 resolution, they're both IPS panels, so the viewing angles and the overall color reproduction is excellent on both of these. And surprisingly, the MacBook Air now gets a DCI-P3 panel too, which means that if you're into photography or video editing, you're actually going to get the exact same color reproduction and accuracy on both of these laptops. There is one advantage that a MacBook Pro has though, and that is the fact that it has a higher brightness of up to 500 nits compared to around 400 nits on the MacBook Air. So if you use your laptop outdoors a lot, or if you're working from a bright office, then the MacBook Pro would be the better choice here. When it comes to the keyboard and the trackpad, they both feature Apple's brand new Magic Keyboard, which is extremely good. So that butterfly keyboard is now gone entirely, so you can say goodbye to faulty keys and no tactile response, as this keyboard is very similar to the one that we had on the 2012 Retina MacBooks. Now, there are two major differences between these two MacBooks when it comes to the keyboard, though. So the MacBook Air does actually offer a more comfortable typing experience thanks to that wedge-shaped design. So if you type a lot, the MacBook Air will actually be a slightly better choice. And the second difference is that the MacBook Pro comes with a touch bar, which the Air does not have. Now, the MacBook Air has changed some of its function keys now compared to the previous model, uh, where we now have a Do Not Disturb button, a Search button, as well as a Dictation button, as opposed to the Launchpad and the Keyboard Brightness uh, buttons that we had before. But the idea here is that you get physical controls for some system toggles uh, on the MacBook Air, whereas on the MacBook Pro, you get virtual controls that dynamically change based on the app that you're using. I do personally prefer having the touch bar, as it does make things such as adjusting the brightness or the volume much faster. But most third-party apps do not make good use of it, not even four years after its launch. So if you go with the MacBook Air, you honestly won't be missing out on much. Now, when it comes to the trackpad, there is a difference here, and that is the fact that the Pro has a larger trackpad than the MacBook Air does. They're both excellent and really the best trackpads in the industry, however, the Pro does have an advantage here. When it comes to the camera and the microphones, they both feature the same 720p camera with a custom ISP inside that Apple M1 processor. When it comes to the microphones, there is a difference. The MacBook Air comes with a triple microphone array with directional beamforming, whereas the MacBook Pro features studio quality mics with a higher quality than those of the MacBook Air. So here's a front video and microphone test. Okay, so this is a front facing camera test and a microphone test on the brand new 2020 M1 MacBook Air. And this is a front facing camera test and a microphone test on the brand new 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. When it comes to the speakers, the MacBook Pro also features higher quality speakers with a higher dynamic range. So here's a quick test and hopefully, hopefully, you'll be able to tell the difference. When it comes to the special features and what really makes both of these laptops unique, aside from what I've already mentioned, there is one thing that makes the MacBook Air very unique, and that is the fact that it does not have a fan inside. All the previous MacBook Airs have had one, and the only MacBook that didn't have a fan was the 12-inch MacBook, which has not been unfortunately discontinued back in 2019. Now, the new Air is, in a way, a follow-up 
to that. And having no fan means that the air will be perfectly silent, just like an iPad is. So the real question is, does the lack of a fan affect its performance? Well, we've been benchmarking these machines heavily over the past two plus weeks, and here is what we found. But before that, I do want to mention that both of these MacBooks feature Apple's brand new M1 processor, as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. So really the only difference between the two, uh, or the only performance difference, will be caused by that lack of a fan in the MacBook Air. The MacBook Pro M1 does have a single fan, which is identical to the baseline MacBook Pro from before. And the first thing that we tested was the time for these machines to boot, and they both booted up in 19 seconds. The wake from sleep time was also identical at 0.5 seconds. Then we ran a Geekbench 5 test, and here, in terms of the single performance, the MacBook Air scored 1,711 points, while the MacBook Pro scored 1,730 points, which was just a 1% difference. And in terms of the multi-core performance, the Air scored 7,432, while the Pro scored 7,525, again, a 1% difference. But Geekbench doesn't actually stress the CPU continuously, instead, it runs a number of simple spiky tests in order to test out the performance performance under an everyday use case scenario. So when we tested out Cinebench, which does indeed stress out the CPU continuously, um, that was when we actually saw a noticeable difference, with the MacBook Air scoring 6,951 points while the Pro scored 7,724, an 11% difference. When it came to the amount of noise and heat, the MacBook Air was completely silent as it did not have a fan. The MacBook Pro, surprisingly, was also entirely silent, as that fan was barely spinning at all. Listen to the noise for yourselves. Now, the MacBook Pro was actually running at a higher clock speed of 2.98 GHz compared to about 2.47 on the MacBook Air. And in terms of the temperatures, the MacBook Pro was running at 75 degrees, while the Air was running at 81. However, this wasn't as much of a difference as I was expecting, to be honest. We then used our thermal camera to measure the chassis of the MacBooks, and the air was at 38 degrees, while the Pro was actually cooler at 36. So as you can probably tell, the fact that we do have a fan in the Pro doesn't actually make a lot of difference when it comes to the thermals. We then measured the battery life on both after all those tests, and guess what? They were both at 99%. We then tested out some photo editing performance using Lightroom. So we imported 228 raw photos on both of these machines, both in .tiff and .dng formats, up to 50 megapixels in size from different cameras. And the MacBook Air took 44 seconds to import, while the Pro took longer, strangely, at 47 seconds. Now, Lightroom was running through Rosetta on both, so once we get an update, this will be even faster. We then applied a bunch of edits to one photo, and then pasted this to all the other 227 raw photos, and this took 1 minute and 7 seconds on the Pro, versus 1 minute and 6 seconds on the Air. We then launched a couple of macOS apps to see how quickly they would both open these apps. So these apps were Final Cut, Compressor, Motion Calendar, Notes, Safari, Settings, and Text Edit, and they both opened these apps in exactly 11 seconds. We also did a disk speed test, and the MacBook Air got 3086 megabytes per second write, while the MacBook Pro actually scored lower at 2801. When it came to the read speed, the Air got 2720, while the MacBook Pro got 2860. So now let's move on to some actual video editing tests. We have two of our actual Final Cut Pro 10 projects here, with the first one being our recent iPhone 13 Leaks Rumors episode. This is an easier project as we only have one main clip, some concept renders, and just a few titles and effects, but overall, this would be more similar to how our videos are usually. And the playback performance here was actually identical. In quality mode, they were both dropping a few frames in the exact same places, so we couldn't really see any advantages to the Pro model here, and then when it came to performance mode, they were both perfectly fluid. Exporting this took the MacBook Air 11 minutes and 57 seconds, while the Pro, interesting enough, was actually fast almost an entire minute here at 10 minutes and 59 seconds. Next up, we have a much more demanding project, our actual iPhone 12 Pro camera comparison project, which you can actually watch right here, which contains five 
4K 60 picture in picture clips, color grading on my recording, text, as well as an animated background behind me, so this is a very complex project. Playing back this project was literally identical on both, in both quality and performance mode, and unfortunately neither of them could play this project back in real time, as it was quite demanding. Like, I was hoping for the pro to pull ahead here, but unfortunately we didn't see any difference at all. We then tested out 8K video playback using Chrome, which has been updated for the M1 chips. And here, the playback was uh, literally identical, again, with both occasionally dropping frames here and there, but interesting enough, they actually both dropped frames in the exact same places. And when it came to exporting this project, the MacBook Air took 49 minutes, while the MacBook Pro took 46 minutes. So yeah, not as much of a difference as I was expecting. Then we took the H.264 file exported from Final Cut, and we dragged this into Compressor and exported it in H.265. And here, the Air took 19 minutes and 14 seconds, while the Pro surprisingly took longer at 19 minutes and 36 seconds for an unknown reason. And now, let's try some gaming. So here we have World of Warcraft, which is actually being optimized to run natively on the Apple M1 chip. And here, at a resolution of 2560 by 1440, and the graphical option set to 10, so as high as they can go, the MacBook Air got a surprisingly playable 29 frames per second. Now, the MacBook Pro did get a bit higher at 32, but to be honest, you can easily drop down some of the settings and easily get a constant 60 FPS on both of these. So if you're looking to actually game on your Mac, as long as the games have been optimized to run natively on the Apple M1 chip, then both of these machines would run really, really well. We then ran a few GPU benchmarks to see if we would see any more differences. We first ran GFX Bench Manhattan, and we got a solid 60 FPS on both of these machines. We then ran the same test off screen, so in the background, and now uh, we got 131 frames per second on the Air and 130 on the Pro. So long story short, in terms of the GPU, the differences between the two were really negligible, uh, and the only place where we actually got to see a performance difference was when it came to prolonged video exports, where the MacBook Pro will pull ahead, uh, but it only pulled ahead by about 5%, so the difference wasn't that massive. Now, when it comes to the battery, the MacBook Air offers 18 hours of video playback, while the MacBook Pro offers 20. Not only that, but the MacBook Pro also comes with a more powerful 61 watt charger compared to the 30 watt charger that the MacBook Air comes with. What this means is that the MacBook Pro will indeed charge faster than the MacBook Air, uh, but the MacBook Pro's charger is a bit bigger than the Air charger. However, both laptops easily feature a full day battery life, so it's not like the MacBook Air is bad and the MacBook Pro is, is great. No, the MacBook Air is amazing, but the MacBook Pro is even better. So at the end of the day, should you go for the MacBook Air or should you pay $300 extra and go for the MacBook Pro instead? Well, to be honest, I would just say that 99% of people looking at these two machines should just go for the MacBook Air. It costs $300 less, which means that you can actually buy a pair of AirPods Pro for that difference, or you can bump the storage or the RAM with those $300 or then going for the Pro. Now the Air is also lighter, it is thinner, and with that smaller charger, it is overall more portable than the MacBook Pro. However, if you need slightly better performance for sustained workloads, a brighter display, and more importantly, the touch bar, then definitely go for the MacBook Pro. Those two extra hours of battery life are also really nice to have, and you also get better speakers as well as better microphones. However, like I said, I still do not think that the Pro offers $300 of value more over the MacBook Air. Now, I do use the MacBook Pro myself, as I do like having the touch bar and that extra bit of performance, but for most people, I think, you should just stick with the Air. Also, a new 16-inch Pro and a 4 Thunderbolt port model 13-inch or even 14-inch are coming next year, so if you are a creative professional, you could just wait for those, which will deliver even more performance than this 13-inch Mago Pro can deliver now. But yeah, let me know in the comments which one would you pick. Definitely subscribe for more in-depth tech videos, and thanks for watching.